Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today's an incredible day for me because it's the first day I'm slaughtering an animal that I raised 100% myself all on my own land. And we're taking you through the whole process of kill, complete butcher, all the way into the freezer. So I'll be showing you that entire process. So if you are squeamish or you don't want to see dead animals or this, this process, um, then you're, this video isn't for you. Uh, but if you want to learn more about raising your own animals, what does the butchering process look like if you do it yourself? And it is a ton of work, you guys. Very satisfying, but it is a lot of work. The other option is to pay and take your animals to have them slaughtered. Um, and then they can do everything for you and then you get back the packaged meat, which is a fantastic option as well. But for me, I really want to learn how to do this myself and have those skills that I always know how to butcher a pig. So this is my fifth pig that I've been a part of the butchering process. Um, I got to do four pigs with my friends Kyle Bell of Forest Fed Farm and Blake Reimer of Tennessee Mountain Farm, which are really good friends of mine here. Uh, we do a lot of farming together and that's how uh, I was able to learn how to do this. So Blake brought over his tractor because this is a very big animal. We unfortunately didn't have a scale but probably around 350 or something like that. Now you can raise a smaller animal um, like an American guinea hog or a cooney cooney. That can be easily be lifted by two three guys. So then I've been down this journey for a year of harvesting my own animals. I've done rabbits, chickens, pigs, and soon to be sheep. I can't tell you enough how incredible this, the experience is and how wonderful it is to have meat in my freezer that I processed. It's amazing. So I can't recommend enough to other people that if you're into homesteading or raising your own food that you raise animals for meat, not just eggs, which that's wonderful and you should definitely have egg layers at least, um, but to raise your own meat is something so incredibly special. Um, you can never buy meat that's as high quality, especially if you're like me, I fed them all organic feed, soy free this entire time. So you can't buy that uh, unless you buy from like my friend Kyle Bell. The other big epiphany that I had was being able to kill my animals on my own land versus taking them to the butcher. When you take them to the butcher, they gotta go through a stressful car ride. They've gotta stay overnight, at least a night, maybe two nights um, at the butcher sh shop where, before they're even killed. So now they're in this new location, not in nature anymore, and then they're killed in a more stressful environment. This allows me to kill the animal with zero, essentially zero stress. Um, you will see in the video, I used a 22. I have killed a pig with a 22. My friends have killed a pig with a 22. Unfortunately, this time it didn't work out, as you will see. Um, a 410 slug, that is the ultimate from different pig farmers that I've talked to. That's the best. I may just pick up one of those so that I have it. Um, but 9mm worked fantastic as well too. Let's get into the video here. You're going to see a, uh, my friend Blake reading a quote by Wendell Berry. That's awesome that we like to read before every pig kill. Let them stand still for the bullet and stare the shooter in the eye. Let them die while the sound of the shot is in the air. Let them die as they fall. Let the juggler blood spring hot to the knife. Let its freshest be full. Let this day begin again the changes of hogs into people, not the other way around. For today we celebrate again our lives wedding with the world. For by our hunger, by this provisioning, we renew the bond for the hog killer. Hard to see the eyes. Then we'll be slitting the throat and letting the blood drain out. So the, the gunshot incapacitates the animal so it doesn't really know what's going on anymore. The blood uh, kills the animal very quickly and we need to drain the blood out anyways. So my shot with the 22 obviously wasn't the best. I probably didn't aim down enough. And then when I came in with the knife, you guys couldn't see it. This is my first time doing that part and I went a little bit too high. I started kind of in the jowls, but Blake said, get down sort of the center of the throat, go until you hit the bone and then rake up. And that causes the blood to really pump out and 
he was gone within 60 seconds probably. So now we're gonna get the tractor, move him over, and then we start skinning him. So right now Kyle is putting slits in the legs so that we can put it on the metal hanger and carry it out of here. I have four bigger ones and the other ones are... So the guys right now are skinning the outside of the feet to start there so they can work towards the loins here. Uh, and then we'll skin up the belly and then start opening up the sides and take off the entire skin. You can go as high as you want to because it's all going to come off. Mm, um, okay. But we'll just cut it off about right there because that's where the meat's going to... Like the, okay. the hawk, if you will, the hawk, yeah. is here to here. Okay. Cool feeling that's your own pig, huh? Yeah, man. So crazy. It's awesome. It's a, it's this is like, I've dreamed of doing this for so long because I couldn't do, I always wanted to do so much more things with agriculture, but being in a suburban area, you just can't oh, yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just so cool how natural it feels to me or just how <clears throat> normal, like this is like normal life. Take that on off there. Oh, oh okay. And fold it down. So now what we're gonna do is, <clears throat> you're gonna try to keep that, this foot from hitting. Mm -hmm because we're going to take the skin down to here and then we'll hold it off and we'll take the feet off. Mm. And that gets our the rest of the dirt contaminant mm. away from where we're opening up the pig. Got it. So you see how I got that one sort of laid over to the side? Yes. And the foot's up so it won't get down there. Kyle and I have before forgot to take our feet off in a timely fashion. And then it was raking against the belly and then fat. Put the dirt in there. And... Yep. Okay. Kyle, could you explain skinning the pig and what you're working on there? Yeah, so all, basically what we have found through the few pigs we've done is just pulling the, the skin of the pig and then I'm just taking the blade and just gliding it across. Um, instead of doing cutting and actual like chopping marks, I'm just gliding it across and just pulling and just letting the pulling motion do most of the work. Um, seems to work good for us. And then remember you can make a poke hole in the skin belly to pull with. Oh, good point. <clears throat> That's right. Yep. However, the odor of all this is not really off the I haven't really spilled it. Beautiful thing. She goes. <laughs> so now I'm going to be adding in some different microbes that I made or received. Uh, number one is Bokashi that I got from SD Microbes. I have a couple of videos on Bokashi anaerobic composting. You should definitely watch. I've been doing it for years. I can't say enough good things about it. You can get 10% off SD Microbes um, on my website. There's a link below. I also put in my own lactic acid bacteria that I made, Korean natural farming style. Um, these are facultative anaerobes that are fantastic at digesting in an anaerobic condition. And then I also added in some IMO2 from a collection that I got out here. I dissolved it in water. IMO2 is indigenous microorganisms from Korean natural farming. And then poured all that in. Basically what we're doing is a ferment with a ton of different microbes submerged in water. So kind of a bit of a JLF in a way as well, um, if you know Jadam. That's what I'm doing just to utilize the entire animal Nothing goes to waste, nothing's being thrown away. I'm using all of it, even the bones we made into stock uh, and calcium phosphate later on when I burn the bones. Pretty, be pretty good at that cooking show. Yeah. Oh, Wildcats cooking. <laughs> Wildcats cooking, look at that. Mm. That's gonna be the part you're gonna want more people with. We're eating the pig's heart cooked on cast iron and belly fat from the same animal that we just killed. Right. Pretty amazing. Wow.
Mm. There's no metally taste, right? No. Mm. That's like a steak, dude. It, it is like, yeah. tastes like a steak. Very, I don't know. I like it. I enjoy that. The texture is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. yeah. To me, it has like a top sirloin. Yeah, type of I think it has that too. Yeah. Watch the butthole. Butthole. Watch the butthole. Someone's beer over there is getting some butthole juice on it. First off, right at the bottom of this, you've got about three inches of back fat on this pig. Mm -hmm. Like, that's fantastic. Cool. But I like to take the knife and go down the spine, like just guessing where the, the midline is mm -hmm. and cutting down to the spine. Okay, so we're gonna take our saws off and cut this first. Hey, fantastic. <laughs> wow, look at that. Wow. Looks good, man. Looks really good. Awesome. Okay. One, two, three. That's true. You almost could just go ahead and quarter it, both of them like this. Even attached. Yeah, just yep. hang on right yep. here. That's so. the fifth rib between the fifth and sixth. Yep, yep between the fifth and sixth. That back cap is so great. Flip it this, this way. Hold it. Yeah. Not. There we go. Second shoulder's off. That's a pork shoulder, baby. <clears throat> Woo! So the reason we just put the meat in the ice is to cool down the temperature of the meat. If you don't do this, it can actually ruin the meat. Um, bacteria starts to grow and get out of control. Um, when you read about it, it says like the bones start to sour and it just ruins the meat if you don't cool down the body um, Because the adrenals have pumped in a bunch of chemicals in there and raised the temperature because we are in the summer I'm having to do this with coolers and ice and unfortunately I spent about 50 bucks on ice to do this So the next time I get pigs next year I'm gonna time it out so that when we kill them it will be in the 30s to 40s at night so we can just hang the body outside and that's the cooling process to cool down the flesh so it doesn't ruin the meat. Um, and then we finish the animal. So there's another uh, tip for you guys that I hope helps you think about this whole process. So, so let's pull that leaf lard out of there. I'll get this started for you here. Maybe take the knife right down through there. I'm gonna have so much fat that I am gonna use the leaf lard to, do, to make some stuff. Oh yeah, uh, cornbread by the way. The leaf, lard. the leaf lard is just fantastic. There's a good picture mm. of your bacon. So you'll slice bacon this way. Right. Mm. And that's why we can cut these almost in bag wow, sizes. Look at the fat on that. So you have cut it up in strips so that you can fit it into a bag. Okay, let's see what we have in the center here. It's about breaking down those protein structures. Uh -huh. So by grinding this, you end up with these little uh, straws of fat proteins at the end of it, as opposed to big chunks of stuff at the end of it. And so it helps get like a more even render from the stuff as you go along. So to make bacon, we're curing it, which means we're combining salt and sugar in a certain ratio, and then just coating the meat with that. We vacuum seal it, let it sit in the fridge for two weeks. At the one week mark, I flipped the packages. And what this does is draws out all the moisture out of the meat, uh, flavors it, of course. Then we sliced it into uh, bacon sized pieces. And it's kind of cool because you can cut either thin or thick cut bacon for yourself. Or if you want to do it Korean style, some gipsal, you can just cut it uncured and just cook the pork belly. So lots of fun options. That's one of the really fun things about doing your own meat is you get to choose uh, how it's all cut up. And there's different choices that you get to make. You know, you can get more meat on your ribs versus less and you'll get more pork chop or you'll get, you know, this and that. So it's pretty neat. So the meat that you're seeing here, this is the liver. These are the jowls that we made jowl bacon out of. Uh, we saved the ears for my dog, the feet for my dog. Uh, we saved almost everything that we could, you know, the kidneys. Uh, we're gonna make some liver pate out of the liver. Trying to use 
as much of the animal as we possibly can. And all of that organ meat is some of the best nutrition on the planet. Check out the West NA Price Foundation. This is the nutritional guidance that I follow. What, what bone did you look, just look for? The end of the um, ribs mm. is all, because we can use that to cut. So this is a roast. <clears throat> yeah, this can be a roast. <laughs> The, the eye does get bigger as you go you down the animal. And then we could trim it even more. Yeah, trim more of that fat off of there. That does seem to be nice to leave it on until this point that much. So yeah. You can choose. So this is an 18 cubic foot fridge and it's filled up about half of it. I got all my bacon, ground, this is uh, cured ham, all this is lard that I got to render. Um, so very happy overall with all the meat that I got from the pig, just fantastic. The flavor is out of this world, nothing can compare to it. This is the best tasting, uh, most flavorful pork you could ever eat. The fat's incredible. On a pork chop, my favorite bite is when it's a 50-50 fat and muscle bite. Just absolutely incredible. I, I could never eat pork from the store again. It's it's that big of a difference. I hope this was helpful getting to see my experience butchering my first pig for you and that you learned a lot and gives you some inspiration to do this yourself because you really can do this and try to find a friend in your area that can teach you how to do it. Could you do me a huge favor and like this video? Because I guarantee there's gonna be a ton of vegans and other psychos out there that are gonna dislike this video. Um, just because we're talking about killing and eating animals, which is completely natural and actually is the superior human food.